Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's bite-sized talk. Today, it's just me. I'm Franziska. And uh, this talk is aimed at people who want to start with NF Core or who know someone who would like to start with NF Core and don't really know how to best get into it. And uh, it's based solely on my own experience. So there might be other ways and there might even be better ways. But this is how I found in the end to best start doing work in NF Core, um, actual development work. Um, in order to give you a bit of an idea where I come from, so I did a PhD in developmental biology. I was working with Drosophila doing um, NGS data or creating NGS data for microRNAs and other RNAs. And at the time I had to analyze my own data. There was no bioinformatician in my group. There was no one that could help me with anything. So it was all learning by doing without much help from anyone really. And uh, in the time I did everything in Perl because that was the state of the art, um, the, the, the big uh, programming language that you had to learn if you were using uh, bioinformatics. I also did some R at the side and uh, to uh, put it all together, I did some bash scripting as well. So after my PhD, I did a postdoc and there I, I was looking at other small RNAs, not microRNAs anymore, also some RNA and all analyzed with, um, with NGS. So this time there were a lot of bioinformaticians around me. It was mainly actually a bioinformatics lab, but I, actually, I wanted to analyze my own data this time. One reason was because I wanted it exactly in that specific way. Uh, another reason was that they were busy with their own projects. So sometimes I had to wait and I'm not, not known to wanting to wait for things. So in the time I was doing more R work, a bit more bash, but uh, generally nothing advanced. And after my postdoc, I started at a co-facility called NGI. And there I started in the lab as well. So I got contact with a lot more of different NGS data so, um, for one in the lab, but also to analyze and look at the results in the end. So I wanted to do a bit more bioinfo and I came in contact with NF Core for the first time. In this time, I uh, started to learn Python and I was using Nextdoor pipelines myself. And this is also when I started to become a member of NF Core. And about one and a half years ago, I um, switched to the bioinformatics side uh, solely. And uh, it was still at the same core facility. I did a bit more Python work. And this was the time when I was thinking about doing my own Nextflow pipeline based on NF Core. And uh, that's that's when the trouble began. So what I wanted to do was actually really, really simple. I wanted to do a QC pipeline for high C libraries. So in the lab, we, are, uh, we offer a service for high C library generation. And uh, after that, we want to check if this is actually, if the, if the library prep worked. So to do that, we need to map the reads with BWA and then we run pair tools we generate some tables based on the results that we get from pair tools, and then we feed this into multi-QC and we get a beautiful report out of it. That was the idea. And uh, I thought it would be super easy because there's already modules for BWA and pair tools, uh, even, even um, some, some pipelines available that use them. And uh, multi-QC anyway is part of all the NF Core pipelines, so it would not be an issue. And also because we did run this kind of QC already in with a, a, a bash script, I I already had the the Python script to make these tables from the pair tool output. So I, I really thought this was would be a piece of cake. <laughs> so based on my background, what, what could I do before I started this? I had some very general scripting experience, like I have my R, my Perl, my bash and uh, Python in the background. I was like, okay, the, it was fairly easy to go from, for example, um, from, from R to Python. There was not that much more that I had to learn, just a slightly different syntax, so it, it should be fine. Uh, also, I felt very comfortable on the command line already at that point, um, having been doing a lot of command line work up to that point, so that was not an issue. 
And being part of NF Core and the core team, I had some experience with Git and GitHub. So I knew how to like uh, make a fork and have my own repo and how to work on it um, on the remote and things like that. So um, I, I felt a bit like Hacker Man. I, I learned this on my own and <laughs> I, I I can do this. It's it's easy. And then also, of course, I had some experience with running NF Core pipelines. And this gives me some familiarity with, with the, um, the names of things. And I was like, okay, I just fill in the gaps and then it, it should work out. Also, I was really interested. I really wanted to do this and I was curious how it would work. And I like things to be neat and tidy. So uh, a next full pipeline would be exactly what I wanted to have. Um, and finally, I, I had some very healthy overestimation of my knowledge. <laughs> this can be a good thing in that it lowers the, the threshold to actually get into things. But of course, it also gives you some major drawbacks later on. So it's good and bad to, to be a bit over optimistic. So what, what were the mistakes that I run into at the very beginning when I wanted to start? So uh, one of the things was that this attitude of, I can do this, how, how difficult can this be? Um, the, it should be very easy to just put things together. And um, the idea for me was also in the beginning to not have this as a st standalone Nextflow pipeline, but I append this to an already existing uh, NF core pipeline. And uh, that turned out to be a bit more than I can chew. And uh, I, I fairly quickly gave up on that. Also, because of that, I was not really working on a testing repo where I started from scratch to learn the basics, but I forked the uh, the existing pipeline and then I just looked at it and tried to figure out what the different bits mean. And it, it was definitely not the right way to start this. So I, I would not advise that to anyone starting from scratch. And And finally, it's not, as much a mistake as more coming with my kind of work, I could not work on it continuously. So I had an hour here, an hour there. At some point I was like, Monday mornings, I will work on this. And it, it didn't work. You, in, at least for the very beginning, you need, I would say a week where you do nothing, but like start to learn next flow. Um, so this brings me now to what, what you probably should do, at least from my point of view, what my recommendations are. The very first one is to plan your project. Like learning Nextflow just in order to have it learned is probably not very fruitful. So you should have an idea what you want to do with it afterwards. And this will also deepen your knowledge and, and um, it will, create some, some basic for, for later work. So if you don't have a current project that you are working on and that you want to implement, it can be also something like, I want to generate the RNSEC pipeline, uh, but with these kind of different things that the current one can't do or something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a big one, but have an idea of what you want to do on your own once you think you are at a step where you can start your own work. Uh, and have enough training. The second one, which was definitely true for me that I did not uh, do follow my own recommendations now, was to watch the Nextflow tutorial. You do need a foundation of Nextflow in order to understand how NF core pipelines work. Um, so there is um, there are there are YouTube um, tutorials I can show you here. Uh, let me know in the in the chat if you cannot see this now. Maybe I have to change my share. Um, so I just assume that you can see it. Uh, so on YouTube here, you have uh, the foundational Nextflow training, which was just recently um, done, like just a week ago, I believe. And there's three sessions. They are uh, two and a half hours long, roughly. And if you're from, if you have different um, language requirements, we also had them beginning of the year in different languages, like um, for example, we had them in Hindi, I think in French, in Spanish. So um, have a look at these trainings and these trainings also come 
with a, a training tutorial, which is here. And here you can you can start your training workshop. So this is independent of when we actually hosted the training um, that you can go through this. Be aware that the we only do this YouTube tutorials twice a year and we continuously improve on the Nextflow training documentation. So maybe if something of the two is not exactly the same as the other, uh, stick with the one that is written because that would be the most up-to-date one. Um, also choose the latest training if you can, because that will have the latest updates in them as well from NF Core. Um, there's something in the chat. Oh yeah, uh, the videos should be embedded in the training.nextflow.io very soon. So <laughs> um, also I would suggest to you to take notes when you do the Nextflow tutorial. Reason for that is that uh, at least for me, I can easier remember things that I actually wrote down. I have maybe my own logic of how I organize things and uh, that helps me remembering things. Um, Good. Also, I would very much recommend you to do the exercises on your own. So when you're going through the tutorial, they will show you how the exercises are done. So they will, in a way, already show you the results. So try to stop it there, do the ex exercises on your own, and then go back and see if you did it right. Um, then also take time. Sometimes an exercise will not make sense immediately. So maybe you want to go back. You might also want to read up on other documentation or you want to um, redo the exercise that you've done two sessions before. So I said those tutorials take two and a half hours, but I actually needed a full day for each session because I, I wanted to write down, I wanted to really think it through what this means and how it relates to the previous session or the, the previous exercises that I've done. And feeding into that, uh, I sometimes made up my own exercises. So like, I now understand these three points, how they work and how they interact with each other. And now I combine them all and I want to do this. And then I tried it on my own and I tried to figure out if it works or not. And I, I just kept at it until I got it to work. So um, this is my, my points for the, the tutorial. Once I, I'd done the tutorial, I was again, very confident. I was like, yes, I understand this. It is a piece of cake to just put this all into work and get my um, next flow NF core workflow to, to be done. So um, unfortunately I had to learn that there is a gap between the next flow course and the NF core pipelines. It is addressed now. So there's going to be an advanced course uh, at the end of the month, I believe that um, I think you can still sign up to, but at least at the point of this, um, this video, there is no advanced course available that closes this gap. So there are some steps that you have to make sure before you start working with the NF Core uh, template and on NF Core pipeline in, in my opinion. And one is to familiarize yourself with the template that we get from NF Core. Like what do the different uh, entries mean? What are the different directories? What are they used for? For example, very important is the work directory. How can I utilize that? Um, so look through it and make sure that you understand these things before you actually start writing anything. And then uh, there will be a time when this will not be enough and you will get stuck. And without tooting my own horn here, um, I think the bite size helped me helped me quite a bit. So we do have on YouTube uh, a bite size playlist that is specifically for developers. And um, I hope you can see this. It has uh, from very, very basic things like resources to learn Nextflow, which maybe is the, the next step to this video down to things that I used, for example, was um, how to customize my multi-QC report, or in my case, I wanted to integrate a custom script. So that one helped me a lot. So um, it is very good for you to, to look through here if maybe something of this applies to your problem. And maybe it gives you exactly the answer you need. Um, there is also, of course, times when 
YouTube doesn't help you and you really need someone to help you directly with your code. This is usually the case when you have an error message that is not helpful. In my case, I had a forgotten a comma in a tuple and it told me that my process was already used and the error message had nothing to do with the problem and I just couldn't figure it out on my own. So then I turned on to Slack and uh, yeah, there I got help in the end. So first in Slack, I would advise you to look through if someone else had the same issue before and maybe then you don't have to spend more time or someone else's time to look at your problem specifically because it has already been solved. But more often than not, uh, your problem is either not directly described or you don't understand the solution. And then of course you can help, uh, you can ask for help. There is a Slack channel that is called um, No Stupid Questions. And that is really the, the case. So there's no stupid question in that channel. You can ask whatever you need to. And finally for me, one of the main um, points was to set small goals. Like I said in the beginning, I started with this big idea of having um, everything at once. And I started with like trying to get this goal specifically in the beginning and it, it didn't work out. I I needed to start small, like set my goal to be, I don't know, adding this one already existing module to a test, um, to a, a a test pipeline that I had or something like that. So that helped a lot. Um, so, and with that, I, I would like to end this today. So thank you all for listening. I will now allow everyone to unmute themselves and also share their video if they want. And um, I'm open for any questions. Thank you. Okay, it, it seems we don't have questions, <laughs> I feel. <laughs> Thank you for your talk, Ran. it's really good. Um, it was really nice to to hear that story and also to hear the, the projects moving along. <laughs> yes. I'm now the multi-QC report. My, maybe I have some questions about that. <laughs> um, I just wanted to reiterate a couple of bits in the in the chat. Um, so you mentioned the error messages. It's like a common thing. I was going to say this week, uh, yesterday, a podcast went out where... Ben from Secure, a Nextflow developer, and I discussed in detail about why error messages in Nextflow are difficult, but also had some good news saying that the edge release that went out this week um, had a whole load of improvements in error messages. So that one you found, was, we actually specifically discussed the tuples with a comma. Now it says, did you miss out with a tuple comma somewhere? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, hopefully that will make, make, make life a bit easier for beginners. Um, and yeah, also the, the training is actually, we've got three trainings in September. We just had the foundational. We've got a short, a short one for beginners, which is new as well, called Hands-On, or at least Revitalize, which is just one session, which is good for beginners. Also good for anyone who just wants a refresher, who's done the foundational a year ago, hasn't used it very much, and just wants to kind of get up to speed. And then Rob is doing the advanced training, which is the first time we've done that um, publicly. And they're all online for free and will be online forever. Yes, awesome. Okay, are there any questions? Um, otherwise, I would like to thank you all for listening. And as usual, I would like to thank the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding our bite-sized talks. And I hope to see you all next week. Bye-bye.